Welcome to the Probate Mastermind Podcast. These episodes are recorded live once a week and are hosted by the AllTheLeads.com coaches. Agents, investors, and wholesalers join the coaches for everything from marketing tips, sales psychology, life deal analysis, transaction engineering, advanced real estate strategy, and personal development. You will learn to get more listings, more deals, and find financial freedom by listening to these episodes. Be sure to catch show notes at AllTheLeads.com slash podcast and join our free Facebook mastermind community, All The Leads Mastermind. Welcome phenomenal agents and investors nationwide. Today is Thursday, December 3rd, 2020, Mastermind, podcast number 306. Hope you all had a great Thanksgiving and hope you're looking forward to the holidays and you're also staying productive at this time when a lot of other agents and investors aren't working. It occurred to us recently that a lot more of you are taking advantage of the podcast online format, and many of you may not be coming to our calls. Before we get started, I wanted to give our two coaches an opportunity. Chad, would you share with everybody, I know there's changes coming to Mastery. Would you let everybody know when Mastery is and the changes and how they can get signed up for it? Sure. And I've got one other thing I'll lead with. I just posted, so Ray Dalio is someone that I look up to as a mentor, and I really learned a lot and drawn a lot of power and knowledge. He's doing one of the most interesting campaigns that I've seen where he's donating a $100 gift card to anyone who volunteers, the first 10,000 people. And it's a really brilliant way for him to build his marketing list of of like-minded people, but also to spread a million-dollar donation around all over the world by letting someone else choose the charity of choice, up to three. So I, I extended that to you guys. I posted it in our Facebook group, All the Leads Mastermind. There's really no strings attached. It's just a philanthropy campaign. If you go drop your name, email address, then you'll get an email with a code as long as you're one of the first 10,000. And I just vetted it out and shared it with you guys. So if you feel like if you're in the spirit of giving and if you're not familiar with who Ray Dalio is, he's a great guy to follow for economic and social research. And he's one of the most successful hedge fund managers ever, but also a philanthropist. So that's my spiel. And check out all the lead mastermind on Facebook and you can find that link. Probate Mastery is finally evolving into a master class. So I've chosen to teach it live because I, it's more fun for me that way. I get to interact with you guys, but it's turned into something bigger than me and people waiting around sometimes for weeks for me to actually teach the live class. So to, to be able to get you guys the full form of everything I can teach and to have instant delivery and to still have access to me, it's going to transition to a digital course that's going to be much longer. I, it's somewhere between 20 and 24 hours of content because I'm adding in a lot of the more advanced things that we sometimes talk about in the Q&A and sometimes comes up on these calls. So you'll have immediate access to the full course, the full curriculum, and then every week you'll have a, you'll have access to me in a live Q&A mastery coaching call. So it's a way for me to deliver more value faster to you. It will be going up in price. We introduced it at 250 and I've just left it there. But I've got big visions for this, and I'm going to give it everything I've got. The final pricing isn't decided, but it will not be 250 So if you have been waiting to take mastery, this is the last class that we'll have at 250 And for all alumni, Joyce, if you're listening, I know you've been 40. This is month 41 for you consecutively. You'll still have access. Anyone who's already had the course will have access to the course once it's open, and you'll have access to the group coaching call. So we start on Monday, 3 p.m., and Tuesday and Wednesday at the same time. So if, you're, if you've been waiting to get in mastery, jump in, and it's likely we'll outsell it. If we oversell it, just check your email that comes out here in a few minutes. I have a plan. If we do oversell the 100 spots, I'll take care of you. Thank you, Chad. And Bruce, you want to share real quick, give an overview of what you offer to our subscribers and to uh, everyone out there. Yep. Okay. Basically, we have two different coaching platforms that are available that are private coaching platforms. First off, for any of our subscribers uh, that have not taken advantage of a free coaching call, you can get that once a month. Um, it's a 15-minute call. Basically, we cover whether uh, strategy or accountability give you an overview of your business and kind of drill in on some of those adjustments that you'd need to make to be successful. If you have been taking advantage of that, you'll probably notice that my calendar is starting to fill up. I do still have some openings available for private coaching. So if you want more than 
15 minutes a month. What we have available is anywhere from an hour of extra private coaching a month where we really dig deep all the way up to you could get four hours a month of private coaching. We go really deep. It's much more granular than the 30,000 foot view that we give on the 15 minute call and should really propel and push your businesses forward. So if you guys want to have a private conversation about what that would look like, what kind of costs there would be associated with, just jump on my calendar, grab a 15-minute call. Uh, we'll go over that, and if we need to talk a little bit more, I'll give you another private link for that. Perfect. And you don't offer a 24-hour program like uh, they can just come live with you for the day, Chad does? No, sir. <laughs> I, I'm picking up my new uh, toy hauler, my new fifth wheel home tomorrow. So if anybody really wants it, I'll come to you. All right. Sounds good. All right. We got a full queue, guys. We got eight in the queue. Let's get started. First up this week is phone number ending in 5464. You're up first. Hey, it's Eddie in Kansas City. How are you guys? Doing great, Eddie. What's up? Yeah, just giving you an update on the... I've been talking with Bruce about this one for, I think, months, but I think the ink is still drying on this contract. Chad had told me to send him the contract in the mail. I didn't do that. I was close to sending it in the mail and for price saying, give me a call. But we met over at the house this morning, and he was like, I was like, hey, I had texted him earlier. I was like, hey... I still want to get together. You want to get this house sold before the end of the year. Let's get a purchase agreement signed. And he was like, yeah, but we still got to talk about price. So I was like, perfect. So we planned on today going by. And I had actually bought the house three doors down last year for 40000 So he said, you bought that house for $40,000. we will do this house for 40000 too, which works perfectly. I was prepared to go to forty five, And we sold the one three doors down for two ten. Holy smoke. So, That's incredible. How much did you I, put into it? We put 110 in it, but the one That's that amazing, we're buying is, is in nicer shape. It has better – it's a historic home. It has better historic features like the cedar shake siding and the stone's in great shape. Uh, the detail on the exterior is really fantastic. So there's a lot of really cool things that the other house didn't have, so we're thinking this one will sell for around 240 So pretty excited about it. But any way you look at it, you have a six-figure spread in this deal, right? Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's a good deal. So, Congratulations. Uh, Anybody to beat that for the for the win of the week? That's awesome. So, good job. Uh, I, I've literally been working on it for a year. So I'm telling people. That's, sure. that's what I want to dig in. That's what I want to dig into. How many other investors do you think or has he told you he's met with? I don't think he's met with any. He's probably been contacted by a lot because it looks like a vacant house, but I don't think he's contacted any of them. It was So your first impression and your follow-up was that impactful, that he's only been speaking well, to you about this for a year? But yeah, I went to his house. I just kept going to his house and knocking on the door because he lived. Yeah. he lives like a block and a half away from this particular house, and he mm -hmm. owns the rental across the street. The neighbors knew who he was and told me where he lived, so I just went and knocked on his door. Well, what all services, him. other than the convenience of a fast closing before the end of the year when he procrastinated until the end of the year, other than that, what else did you have to do for him? We, there was a ton, like his brother had lived there, and there was a ton of stuff in the house. So I called, I was like, hey, Ken, can you even tell what's going on in here? He was like, not really. So I was like, how about we just have a, the city does bulk item pickup. I was like, how about we do a bulk item pickup and haul all this big stuff that you don't, that just clouding what's going on out to the curb. So I had a guy that works for me come over and haul out old mic. His, his brother was like a tinkerer. He had a bunch of old microwaves, an old stove, an old refrigerator, a uh, filing cabinet, a couch, an old TV, some old speakers. And it just cleared out the house. So he was able to get a better view of what he wanted to keep. And then he, I think that was just a big help for him. And I think the service that I provided was just that I got the ball started. He's been, I think, grieving over his brother's loss for three years. And the first time I went and saw him, he was like, well, I've got to get some stuff out of there. Let's talk later. So then I went back a year. No, I went back multiple times, but I only got him a year later, nine months to a year later. And he was like, oh, there's some stuff in there. I got to get it out. And I was like, so I didn't let that go. I was like, okay, how can I help you? And then he put up another objection. I was like, all right, we can figure out an option. Do you want to, if you want to sell it on the market, but we need to go over there and take a look at it together and talk about it. And he really knew that I wasn't going to let him go by just blowing me off. And so then we set up a time to meet. I wrote him an appointment card like you get at the dentist, and I mailed it to him. <laughs> and I said, 
hey, we're going to meet. I look forward to our appointment at 1130 on this day. He was there. We met. We talked through it all. That's when we scheduled the bulk item thing. He gave me his phone number so I didn't have to go to his house anymore. Cool. And Here's I what I hear, he man. Just- you bought a house with leadership and influence, not pressure. You helped mm-hmm. him through the probate quicksand. You ushered him through his whatever emotional breakthrough that it took. Like you, you were persistent in doing what was in his best interest. And he gave you a price uh, even lower than what you were willing to pay. And I'm, I know I'm stating the obvious to you, but there's a lot of people listening that haven't done this yet. They haven't made six figures in a year, much less on a single deal. And I think what you've done is, is it's worth capturing. So thanks for elaborating on all that. And Eddie, I'm going to I'm going to ask how long do you think he would have let this go on if you'd not taken leadership? A decade. Yeah. I I don't think yeah. until he couldn't mow the lawn anymore and the city got after him that much because the lawn wasn't like The other thing I'm, I'm going to the other thing I'm going to point out is he named the price, okay? And a lot of times we as investors and agents, people try to pin us down on things like price and get information from us on the phone before we've proven value and been able to meet with someone, and that's a mistake. So I think that you did a great job on getting him to name the price, which was clearly inside of your budget. So that's a great job. Yeah, what I was going to do before he he was going to throw it out, Chris Voss says give a range, and I was going to give him a range and see if he could go in there, and he he just did that without me having to, but it it worked out well. I'm pretty excited that I, I got this again. So That's awesome, man. Thanks for sharing the story. You're welcome. Great story. Appreciate it. All yeah. right, we have four, four more in the queue. Next up is phone number ending in 2450. You're up next. Hey, guys. How you doing? Doing great. How about you? Great. This is Scott. I'm in Salt Lake City. I'm calling. I've got a couple of questions on the new probate mastery is it something that both I could, I could go through as well as my assistant while only paying for it once, or do I need to pay for that twice to, in order to do that? It just depends on if you want her to be or the him or her to be certified as well. So the price is for the class and certification. Okay. Yeah. I think I would be the one that would be certified, but I want them involved in the content to, to learn as well, if that's okay. Yeah, you can share with your team. The other question I had, last question, is I'm in the middle of a transaction. It was one of the leads that I got from you guys. Listed the house as a real estate agent, sold the property. It's under contract and the the settlement deadline's popping up. And I'm finding that these people have so many more problems than what I even knew. And they just don't have a clue how to navigate it. They've got life insurance they haven't even pursued. They've got lawsuit that they need to file and go after other money. They've got so many things happening. And I have a really good relationship of trust with them. And it's just, it's opening my eyes. What do I need to do to help them more? But as a real estate agent, you can only, I can only do so many things. And my question is, I feel like going and talking to the attorney, if at all possible, and I, I want to find out why an attorney wouldn't recommend they do certain things and where that attorney let, leaves off. How can we help people and serve people better? Maybe you can give me a little insight as to what the attorney, a probate attorney specifically, does. And- so you're a small business owner, right? Correct. You ever gotten in a slump, dropped the ball? couldn't keep up with all the inbound, but everything that had to be done, made a bad hire. You felt that struggle, yep. right? Everybody yep. on this call has. And what most people fail to forget is attorneys are small business owners who were not trained in small business. They were trained mm-hmm. in the legal practice. Law school is not designed to turn out good entrepreneurial attorneys. It's, it's designed mm-hmm. to turn out legal professionals. So understanding, like be just like with, with the person, the families, you need to be empathetic to that attorney's position and why they might not be mm-hmm. providing the level of service that you or the family expect. Now, don't go in there with a negative judgmental mindset. Go in there and say, how can I help you provide this higher level of service? Or can you push this off onto me and trust that I'm the right person to connect them with a registered investment advisor that will help them transition and like trigger the transfer on death clause and receive the life insurance funds. Get them to mm-hmm. a litigation attorney who can file the lawsuit that you referenced. If he's a probate attorney, mm-hmm. he's already dropping balls. You don't, he doesn't need to be the litigation attorney. If this matters, mm-hmm. you, need a, you need a bulldog. So go yeah. get them that registered investment advisor. Go get them a bulldog litigation attorney. But I think you're absolutely right. You do need to go look at that attorney face-to-face and sit down and say, man, listen, I consider you a member of my team. 
I didn't know how much help these people needed, so I haven't called for this appointment, but I've learned some mm-hmm. things lately. Like, I'm going to help them close the real estate. Then they need help with moving life insurance. Then they need help with, with pursuing this litigation. So are mm-hmm. you, I just wanted to make sure that I have your endorsement, that, that you're okay with me helping your clients connect with the right professionals that can get those jobs done for them as fast as possible. And he's going to respect the hell out of that. That's a great approach. I, my approach was going to be from a giving perspective. I want to give these people something and maybe find out how I can do that with his, you know, knowing that he's the probate attorney and not having to step on his toes. So you're not, you're just helping him. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a really good approach then. I, and obviously that's the type of thing that would build a good relationship with that attorney and if nobody else has ever might done bring, that for him. Yeah. I'll, I'll bet you. Yeah. Yeah. And it, when he knows that he knows you're not trying to monetize that service, so you get even right. more social credit. I and that's it. that I hear when I hear that story is I hear a massive conversion story for future conversations that you have with PRs is you get mm-hmm. into a conversation, you say, do you mind if I, do you mind if I share a story with you? But yeah, sure. Yeah. This is what I experienced with some other clients, Bob and Jane. True story, they were working with such and such an attorney, and we just weren't, because of the attorney relationship and because they expected the attorney to handle everything, they ran into this and this problem that they didn't even know about. That's mm-hmm. where I came in and helped them out. And so, by sh- and all of a sudden, by sharing the story of someone else, you get the person that you're talking to self-identify as having some of those same potential problems. And it, mm-hmm. it really builds massive credibility. So I'm going to encourage you to use this experience in your conversations from here on. And were you on the right call yesterday? I, I missed it. I was in a training cl- uh, a class, and I couldn't make it yesterday, no. Okay. So we talked about a, a completely different idea, but the idea was how mm-hmm. to turn that into a, turn those stories into content strategies. So how to mm-hmm. use that story to create uh, one big piece of content and then little articles that kind of branch off of that to mm-hmm. get your name out there. And you can get years of mileage out of that story if you document it. So you want written gotcha. testimonials, you want video testimonials, you want to do a Zoom interview with the attorney, you want to do a Zoom interview with the litigation attorney you're getting involved with, the registered investment advisor, each of the family members, mm-hmm. their kids, like any other kids that are over 18 years old, and what the difference that equity and mm-hmm. the life insurance and the asset equity, like milk it for all it's worth, like show that to the world. You're doing the work. You may as well take mm-hmm. credit for it. And if you slow down and step out of your comfort zone and capture these things and then repurpose them as a marketing strategy, but very discreetly as valuable content that goes out into your community, Mm -hmm. you'll put a flag in the sand that nobody will ever be able to take from you. And you'll create a sellable asset, not some short-term revenue stream. Cool. I like that. I like that a lot. All right. Good work, man. That helps, Scott. Anything else? Yeah, great job. That's super helpful. I really appreciate it. I literally just walked out of their house before hopping on this call. My next call is to the attorney and try to go meet with them and get things going. So I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Reminds me of last week. I think we had eight participants and six of them had great success stories. So uh, these are my favorite calls. If you guys tell me that, you know, what you're doing and what we're teaching is working. That's awesome. All right. Well, next up is, <laughs> thank you. Next up is phone number Ed Diggins, 6231. You're up next. Hey, how are you guys? I've got a question for you. When you switch to the new format on Mastery, do we lose any of the archive Mastery training? No, I'm going to put up, uh, I think the best class I ever taught was the October class. And I'm going to put that into uh, kind of a, a memorialized format where it, it'll remain as like, the unless I do a better job this month. We just had a really big crowd and we got into a lot more advanced topics and the Q&A was almost eight hours in that course. Whether it's a, the course that I'm going to teach next week or that one, I'll have that version available to you forever. All the recordings that, that you've gotten in the past will remain, they're on GoToWebinar server, so they'll, you'll have access to those, but then there'll be that one version of always available so you can see what it used to be and how it got to where it is great and some of the new training 24 hours worth that's that's a lot of training are you going to go into some of the subtleties of your sales mastery how how you dig a lot more into psychology and really even some neurology but the bigger addition to it will be on how to how you structure your business how to how to Structure assets, protect assets, build your own estate plans, contain liability. Like I'm basically going to show you how I've built what I've built and minimize taxes, maximize.
maximize value and really protect everything you work so hard for. Because that's what I find myself when people hit a certain level of success, that's where I feel like everyone has blind spots and then they come back to me. And as we build our relationship and they scale this, I, I feel like I've left that out. And from how to properly put firewalls in place, if you're doing brokerage and investing and private money lending and capital raising, and it, at a certain point, if you keep pushing and growing, you'll be doing all those things and you'll just be one person. You don't have to, to be four different brands. And then you choose which strategy and which entity fits this person's situation best. So it's going to be some of the more advanced things that, that you wouldn't expect to get from just a probate course because as I've done this long enough I realize like it's just something that nobody else they, people don't seem to be learning that elsewhere so I'm going to give you advice and ultimately it'll be you and your attorney or your CPA that, that chooses a structure for you but I'm going to try to expose you to at a deeper level to entity structure asset protection investment strategies that I use personally and for the families that we we serve and then more psychology psychology and neurology and why I say more specifically why I say some of the things I do and how I say them. So that's some of the stuff that's being added in and best I can figure in my outlines, it's probably going to be pushing 24 hours of total course content. And it it's probably should take you three to six months to actually implement if, if you hit it hard and it would take three to six months to implement what I'm going to pack into the course. But it's all going to be one step built on top of another. So that doesn't matter. If you pass the information part and you get your certification, then you can dig into the business structure and all the other stuff. Sounds great. I thank you for having our backs with that. Not a lot of people think of that, and I, I, I definitely am excited about that. That's for sure, as well as the, you're helping us with the psychology and the neurology and the bits and pieces and the subtleties of sales mastery, which you really are a pro at. My question is, if you're if you're doing other things other than just the probate and your CRM, do you have any CRMs you recommend, whether that's FreedomSoft, RealFlow, or REI BlackBook, that if someone wanted to have a bigger, more robust CRM and scale their business, any suggestions? A really difficult question. To, I'll, an, I'll answer with a question. What is your level of tech savviness? Uh, yeah, so throw out the uh, the podio because that's too way that's too much. That's I know you have to be like a, a programmer almost it seems. And if you think that's no, you don't. If you're really untech savvy, it seems to me like you have to know a lot about different things or spend a lot of money just to hand it over to somebody to build that. So that's, uh, my next question is, what is your budget? It, and my answer is just like anything in real estate, it's all a return on investment. If I'm going to spend Five or ten thousand dollars on marketing, but I'm going to get a giant ROI. We'll find the money to make that happen, just as much as a difference between buying a single-family home or a 300-unit complex. If the numbers are there, one must find a way. It's just a great deal. So there's a ton of there's obviously and there's a lot of consolidation happening in that space right now. Salesforce just announced their disposition or their acquisition an acquisition yesterday. So there are literally dozens upon dozens that you can choose from. It, it can ultimately will come down to what is your business strategy? How fast will you outgrow a boxed solution? Salesforce is super powerful, super expensive, and set up as costly and, and takes time. Podio is one of the simpler ones. Not to disappoint you, but it, it is simpler. But the great thing about Podio is there are certain investors and certain realtors that actually sell everything they've done to customize it as a plug-in for a few hundred bucks. And they probably spent twenty to $50,000 to get it to that level. So there's Podio is probably the fastest because someone else has already done the work. You just need to find the version that best fits your strategy. The most, one of the most powerful that's like the, that you could build on your own that's simple and backed by a really good support team. I really like the tools that HubSpot is making. If you're stretching out, say, if you've outgrown our CRM and you want to bring other strategies in, HubSpot can be turned into a really cool marketing machine. And it's very affordable at the beginning. And as you scale, you move up the price scale, kind of like the MailChimp price model. So I would encourage you to pick up the phone and talk to those guys. Look for the, the people in your in, the other industries that you're working in or the other strategies you're using. Look for Podio plugins that have already someone else has already paid to build and perfect. But as far as probate goes, all that said, 
I've yet to see one that will handle the data we provide and manage your list anywhere close to what ours will without spending twenty five to thirty thousand dollars. And Sierra Interactive is the the one that I've seen that took what we've done and built on it. David Pinnell is, is one of our subscribers and very successful in this niche, but he's invested a considerable amount of money and time working with the, the with their development team. So I wouldn't suggest it for almost anyone. He's just running at a much faster pace than most of us. Great. And the private coaching, I'm just new to this, and I just signed up for the training next week. I'm really excited about that. But I never, I knew, I never knew about that free coaching call for 15 minutes. And what, how do you get on that? And also, if one wanted to do the hour or four hours a month or whatever it is, what does that cost, and how does that work? So, Bruce, you want to tell them how to yep. get started? So, if you if you're going to take the private coaching, uh, the the 15 minute free call, log it into your portal. You click on the training drop down, and then I believe that the link under training in the menu, so right in the menu, training, and I believe the link says schedule a free coaching call. And those are 15 minute blocks. And to go into more details on what you need out of kind of the private coaching, anywhere from an hour to four or more or less. Essentially, after that call, you and I would probably just schedule or any of the other subscribers on this call that want, want that. After the 15-minute call, we'd schedule another short call to just really dig into the needs of your business and go over pricing and things there because it's almost impossible to price that until I really understand the needs of what someone what someone truly needs. Sometimes it might just be a, a mastermind group with a couple of other people. Sometimes it might be a couple hours every other week. It just depends. All right, cool. And do you guys presently recommend any VA services if you wanted to get some help just implementing all this stuff so that you're not totally all on your own and overwhelmed? Are you looking for full-time? Full-time eventually, but probably don't have enough unless you'd say to me, hey, Mike, after you take this mastery, you're going to see you've you got more than enough of, than 40 hours. Or you may say 10 hours or 20 hours. I'm thinking I have a need for 10 to 20 hours right now. Okay, that's perfect. I'll tell you this. If you're serious about what you learn in mastery, it'll take you 10 years to implement that at the highest level you can all of the ideas that we talk about. So, if you're committed to delegating, the one I would suggest is my Outdesk, and okay. my friend Daniel Ramsey owns that. We're not affiliated. It's just one of the companies that we like to support because we believe in what they're doing. They pour their souls into their people. They're Philippine-based, but they have literally built schools and office buildings and created an amazing culture around remote work. So you can schedule a free call if you want. Ask for ask if you could do it with Daniel Ramsey. There's a we did a tips from the train or ask the expert series. If you go to the learning center on alltheleads.com, actually go to the search bar and just type in my outdesk or Daniel Ramsey, and it'll bring that up. But Daniel and I did an interview. I don't know, maybe a year ago, where we talked about how that can work in your business and what their model is. But that's who I would suggest if you want the the least growing pain because they came up in the real estate industry. They know they are like Daniel was a real estate investor and like he knows the, the business we work in and he trains the people so they know the business we work in. So that would be the path of least resistance. There's lots of other companies out there. Reva, another friend of mine, Amy Ramsdale, owns a company called Reva, R-E-V-A. And I think they're they're Atlanta based, but they're doing real estate investor virtual assistance. And that's a good company backed by really good people. So you can consider them. Those are the two that just people that I personally know and trust that are they're gurus, not gurus. So they've they've been in the trenches, learned and then built those companies. Great. Do do either of those have VAs that are good with the websites and the in the in the whether it's pay-per-click or Facebook marketing ads, or is that something I'd have to train them from scratch? I think probably my outdesk is going to be your best bet there. They they certainly do a lot more training and development of their employees. And what you'll find with my outdesk is you're not going to get you won't get assigned a VA like you will an Uber driver. You're going to get they will hand select and and train and mentor a person based on your values and your business model, and that will be your full-time employee or at least part-time employee. I think uh, they start well, throw, I think they start at 20 hours. Okay. Chad, and I'll throw I'll, in. I've had five my Outdesk VAs, 
and you also have have input into who they assign to you. So you get to interview them with my outdesk before uh, you actually hire them, and then they go into a training program. So it's really good. And just in case any of them don't have, do not have expertise in, let's say, web development or social media or Google advertising, anything that you need, just in case. When you schedule that free call, I can uh, go over a couple of the op other options. I would agree with Chad that my outdesk is probably the best one that's out there. So I'd lean toward them first. But if you can't find the specialty you're looking for, there are other offshore-based VA programs. Awesome. And last question. Do you guys ever use the strategy where, and I hear some people are doing this, where with Facebook advertising where you can get a list, whether it's the list from the probate, the probates from you guys, or a list of probate attorneys or, or, or what have you, and somehow upload it to Facebook and went over those executors or those probate attorneys are on Facebook, you're, there's your ad popping in front of them, you know, what, you know, whether it's the property solutions, probate property solutions company or, or we buy houses thing or whatever it is, that's popping up there especially if you want to go that extra mile. So I'll make your day. That's actually going to be part of the new mastery course. I'm going to build in a digital marketing component where you'll understand how to take the lead you already have and, and reach them in a multimedia campaign. So that we've talked about it on these calls. If you use the search bar in the top of all the leads.com, you can put in Facebook or custom audience, and you'll be able to hear two or three different calls where we've gone long form and explained how to do it. What I've found is very few people ever can get that implemented. So that's going to be part of the, the marketing how-to modules in the new version of Mastery. That's great. And, and, of course, in a perfect world with right trained VAs who already know a little bit about social media, you wouldn't and, – and if someone were to not be able to themselves implement it, that's where you would say, hey – Here's some general stuff of what I'm trying to do. Go do it or figure it out because that's there. They can do that and they can make it happen. That's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I was bringing up VAs because I know that there's those strategies out there that I may not have the patience or I might have just too much ADD to get in front of the computer and just drive myself crazy and take the time to do it, but I'd like to hire and outsource that stuff. And uh, yeah, I think that's great that you're that you're going to that you're going to teach that because I heard that's a pretty uh, nice thing. And it's only mind you, if you skip tracing the call or you email them and they're not responding, but you really do want to you know, be more effective and just throw one more thing into the mix to increase your 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 making that person recognize hey, maybe they might want to consider your service and get some more information. But we talked about earlier, like the multimedia campaign, and that's part of the, the marketing training that I feel like I've missed. And it will include, obviously, the direct mail and phone calls that we always talk about that I think will always be important, but adding in proper email marketing. How do you write proper subject lines? What is good copy versus bad copy? What's a standard to set for yourself and beat? And then what do you do on Facebook, on Google, on these different digital platforms, and how do you tie that all back together in the organic stuff that you're doing with attorneys and with nursing homes? And so it, it'll take in all of the, the marketing avenues and show you how it all ties together with what we what we're already teaching and most of us are already doing but that's not going to happen this coming up one that's somewhere down there if i can drink enough coffee i hope by january or sometime in january it will be long very good thank, thanks so much Chad. i appreciate it god bless you guys jim you still there yeah this is uh, next up i am here next up is nine two nine six yeah, this is uh, Rich. Uh, quick question. I'm new to ATL. I downloaded the CSV file, and I was noticing from trying to uh, distinguish between the deceased name and the PR representative, I've got to go multiple fields, and I've tried to use freeze frame, but it, it, it freeze, uh, and, and I either I'm not proficient or whatever. I've even gone on YouTube, but they've got older models of Excel on there. Can you tell us what the purpose of doing it in a CSV versus a CRM? Why are you doing it that way? Oh. In other words, I, I just downloaded it because that's what I thought you were supposed to do. It says down, you no, want to download you, When it. you log in, log in the subscriber portal, you'll click on My Probate Leads, and where you downloaded that, it was showing up below that in the list view, in the CRM view, and you'll okay. click on it, click on the PR name, and then that will open the lead detail view. So everything's right there in an in a easily usable format. 
Okay, so you can see the PR's name next to the deceased member's name, so you don't have to slide back and forth? Yes, and you can also customize your view. If you look, when you go into My Probate Leads, there's a teal button, a little square teal button. If you click that, it'll allow you to hide or reveal additional columns, and you can reorganize those to suit your needs. Oh, okay. Thank you. I didn't know that. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Next up is phone number ending in 8213. You're up next. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Fed. Excellent, sir. How about you? Hall as well. Thank you. I have a question about attorneys and then one that may actually, you guys may go back to my out desk, but I'm not sure. Often when I cold call or lead generate, whatever we want to call it, if I don't get a hold of a person, I usually leave them a voicemail. But in addition to that, I try to quote unquote, touch them in another way as well. So I usually try to do a handwritten card so that then I left them a voicemail plus handwritten card. Then I do the follow-up call. That way I'm constantly staying in front of them. What I did to become more efficient is I hand wrote two versions of a card and had my digital guy put them in a vector form and fit it to a size where on an eight by 11 sheet, you can fit four cards. So I put it on a nice paper stock. And then essentially yesterday, I got a hundred version, a hundred of each card printed for $30. So it saves a lot of times. So I'm not constantly handwriting unless it needs to be a custom card. However, I'm finding that when I do make my calls and then I want to send out the card, by the time I'm done, doing the calls, I'm so mentally tired and then just drained with all the other stuff that we got going on that when it comes time to actually have to prepare the envelope, have to put the address and all that stuff, I just don't really have the energy or desire to do it. Is that something that maybe my out desk could do is, or is that too little of a task? I usually try to so send first out of all, every day. Wherever Brian so, Buffini might be in the world today, he has cold chills, and he's not sure why. If you haven't followed Buffini, you would, if you didn't get the joke, go look up Brian Buffini, one of the best public speakers I've ever watched, actually. But he's huge on the handwritten notes and the power of that. So, he's so, such a big thing. He built a career around it and a following. So okay. I commend you for what you're doing. It's a great idea. I want you to commit to stop doing it that way today. You've Perfect. already done the work. To, you, you've written the notes. You've got mm -hmm. it system, somewhat systematized. You're going to send an email to support at all the leads com, and you're going to say guys mm -hmm. listen i need to talk to someone about getting this into your system and uploading custom lists then when you're prospecting you're going to use the short code function in the crm and when you when we, one of those happen you're going to put in the short code the send note card at the end of that prospecting session or when you get all the way through that list, you're going to export that list, delete all of the ones that don't have that short code, and then you're going to upload that as a custom list. We're going to print them off, mm. cut them, mail them, and you're never going to do this again. Oh, my God. Lifesaver. All right. Good. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. A lot, a lot. Yeah. It, may, it makes it much easier. No, because I was just saying, all right, I have all these sheets of paper where I'm highlighting who it goes to, who it doesn't go to, all that stuff. But then but when it comes time to do it, it's just, it doesn't happen. So then I'm like, why did I do all that for? Okay. You can do it in under a minute the way I just told you. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm absolutely, that starts today. So thank you for that, 100%. The other question has to do with attorney. When some of the leads that I'm calling, the PR's phone number under the PR happens to be the attorney's phone number, and there's only that number. At that point, do you suggest still calling and perhaps going with the approach that you suggested to, I believe it was Scott, where you're just asking the attorney for permission to give his or her client the right contacts to complete the non-legal aspects of the probate? Because I haven't so been calling because I just didn't what, know what approach. It, that is ahead, usually, it's usually a sign that person is a public administrator. So there either okay. is no family to serve or the family is estranged and fighting. And the judge said, you guys take a sideline. We're going to appoint somebody else. So that's okay. usually the case. So the attorney 
Excuse me. In in most cases, the attorney is the PR in that situation, and for them, okay. it creates even more of a challenge because now they have all of the responsibility, not just twenty five percent legal responsibility. So yes. I will give you the same answer that I gave before. You need to approach that person, small business owner to small business owner, and yeah. with empathy and understanding how much time it takes and how little money they make for doing that, or mm-hmm. even if they have to go build a team and refer all this out. Like you already have the team built. They can literally just hand it to you. You're not asking for kickbacks. You're not trying to monetize every piece. You just want to earn the real estate deal. Those are some of the most important attorney relationships because they are professionally, they're acting as professional fiduciaries in addition to their legal responsibility. And that comes up once a month, 10 times a month. You never know how many they're doing each month. Oh yeah, perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't know how to contact them, but now I'll put that into action today then. Uh, it looks like I got some attorneys to call. Hello. Awesome. Thank you, buddy. Two more in the queue. That should take us nicely up to the top of the hour. Next up is phone number ending in 5428. You're up next. Hello, this is Richard Curtis. I'm new. I have one or two questions. I sent Chad. I'd sent you. A, I was on the call a lot yesterday, but I'd sent uh, an email over to you, Chad, to to see if I, I started your the recorded mastery. Can I still participate in the one starting Monday? Yeah, absolutely. You'll be registered. You'll get an email confirmation whenever we get everybody registered manually. Okay. Second thing, this has been a great call, and I love all the – I can appreciate the idea that it's going to take me 10 years to get everything implemented. Take all right, I'm going to go long. back. You can hit a stride of seven figures of income in one year with what we're talking about. To really master it, you can take a decade. I don't want to intimidate people and make everyone think it's going to be 10 years to a paycheck. Definitely not the case. No, I, and I'm not saying that, but I, it's amazing some of the stuff you talk about. Uh, but I wanted to drill down a little bit more on that note card idea. Uh, I have – listen to Buffini, but I've never been good at implementing it. I salute the, the previous caller. I've never been good at implementing that. But if I can, if there's a simple way to do that, can you walk us through again what we would have to do on the My Leads uh, website to make that tip or set that up for us? The quickest way right now is we include so several pieces of this longer call. If you look, there's a teal button that you can click, and that shows you all the available columns in My Probate Leads, so you can customize your okay. view. Okay. If you click on that teal button and then click on short code or code, I think it might be shortened, then that's going to put that in your list view. Then when you click into a lead detail view on the very first tab, there's an input for short code. So when you talk to somebody or don't talk to somebody and that and they become somebody you want to send a note card to, just put in note card in the short code field and then save. And then when you go back out to the list view, you'll be able to click that short code column and it will sort either ascending or descending. And then you can export that list, delete all of the ones that don't have a short code, and then you can go to Mailbox Motivator, order mailing campaign, upload custom list, and then you can we can help you produce your postcard, and then you upload that as your mailing piece. So you place a custom mail order versus an automated mail order. But it should take you less than a minute to do the export and place the order once you have that system in place. And we have handwritten fonts of many different kinds and many different colors. We can make it look and feel any way you want. Just, I would say that for the very first one, let's get your mail piece designed and get it on file, and then it'll be a lot more automated and will take you very little time to do. Excellent. That would have the same kind of cost as, as sending out the letters, I'm assuming? I'm not positive. It depends on what mail piece you're sending, but it should be less expensive because you're going to be sending a note card, which is, and it could even be a postcard, which is considerably less expensive. But I would imagine you would probably send it in an invitation envelope, like the smaller uh, note card envelopes. So the cost should be less than the A8 envelope. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Tim, thank I you. If, I don't know if Tim has a microphone. If you know that costs, I'm not sure if Tim can it's talk not, right now. If you send it out as a postcard uh, without putting it in an envelope, it's obviously less expensive. And we'll work with you to get anything done that you want to do. And I, I guess I'll also say this, that at any point, anything that you want us, we put out a lot of letters every month. We put out letters all, yeah. all month long, not just the ones that we do, the normal uh, standard probate letters, but people send out specific kinds of letters they want to go do. We literally do thousands of mailings a month that aren't part of this. Any kind of mailing that you're doing, even if you're doing mailing for the other parts of your business, we'll do anything that you need to go do, and you can upload custom lists 
and we help you with skip trace and all the rest of the pieces that you need to work with. So just let us know what you want to do, and we'll be happy to work with you. We've got people who are standing by all day long working with our customers to get out what you need. Richard, yeah, you're here, Richard. Go ahead. One one other quick question. From yesterday in the call, the roll call call yesterday, you had talked about, I think it was Chad that was talking about it, but he talked about a an agreement that you would use between the PR that you could then turn around and use for your locksmith. Do you have anything written up like that we could uh, use as a format? To... I don't really have one. I used to have people just send me an email saying that I had their permission to access the property in, in case the police ever came. And Bruce and I have laughed about this before. I have literally been standing drilling the lock out of a house when a police officer goes by and didn't even bother to stop. But I always thought, man, I want something on my phone in case uh, instead of going to jail, I can say, no, the seller told me I could do this. But I was shocked the first time it happened. It was like 10 degrees, and I'm out there freezing my butt off, drilling a lock. And he just drove by and waved at me, and I'm like, what in the world? But what I, I've what I suggested stopped. was – I've been stopped by the police. So it, this is very powerful. Chad dodged a bullet. I didn't dodge the bullet when I was drilling a lock out. So – Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Don't look online for Bruce Hill. You, we don't want you guys seeing the mug shots. <laughs> anyway. Well, just... I'm scheduled to talk to Bruce tomorrow. Maybe I'll have him email me something if he's got something. So <laughs> whatever yeah. works. His, uh, his, his post-prison letter. Um, <laughs> it it doesn't have to be yeah. overly formal. It's really just for permission, just for them to, to show their intent for you to actually do that. And the the other part of that suggestion yesterday was they said the contractor didn't want to do the work because he wasn't sure he was going to get paid. So there would be two parts to that letter. One is permission to access the property. Two is an intent to pay for a certain lock set. I would actually use the SKU number so that they you're specifically defining which lock set is to be used and what price will be paid upon completion of the work and also that a photo sent to a certain number or a certain email address will be what's required for payment and if you I would put check boxes in there for permission to put lock agree to put lock box on agree to mail keys to this address you you can make a customized form that fits your specific need but the, really the two points are to make the contractor comfortable that they're they're going to get paid and they know what the scope of work is and to protect your assets if if you get caught drilling the lock yourself okay. or if the contractor gets caught all right thank you richard appreciate it last up this week is phone number ending in 7428 you're up oh hey guys i was just going to ask a more general question and i'm not sure if you could beginning or not, but what your thoughts are for the next three, six, 12 months market-wise? We better let somebody else answer that one. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Do you want a 24-hour answer or do you want a brief one? I'm just kidding. Every, I'm just kidding. Disagree. That's a better question. <laughs> oh, gosh. It, if I had a uh, crystal ball, I would have sold all my property in 2007, and I didn't. I, I don't even know. I don't want to even attempt to answer that. I do know that there's going to be opportunity no matter what happens. There always is. Does anybody else have a short answer to that or no? I don't know. I don't know the short answer, but Bruce does. Yeah, the short answer. I'll I'll go shorter than Chad would. When I see the debate on what the market's going to do, all I see is everyone everyone comments and says everywhere else, but it's not going to crash here. And that's all over the country, from every city. It's not going to crash here. It's not going to crash here. Inevitably, we've got tons of shadow inventory, and we don't know if – there's going to be forgiveness and forbearances that are offered. If there are not, the market's certainly going to slow down. Are we healthy enough to avoid foreclosures as a country? Probably. We're probably healthy enough to avoid a massive wave of foreclosures. But there are, Chad probably knows the numbers a little better than I do, there are huge numbers of people who are behind on their mortgages that are going to need to sell before their equity goes away. So there's going to be some pretty substantial opportunities to get deals on properties, even if it's not the foreclosure side. Yep, said and short. Chad, you want to take a short stab at it? We're at overtime. I will say we talked about this a lot in Shift Happens back in March. 
And I will say that I've been very surprised that the measures that have that we've been so willing to take so quickly from the Federal Reserve and Treasury. So it did kick out my predictions 12 to 18 months. We were 6.6 .6 million housing units short, according to the numbers, coming into this. But we also had far more people coming into this that could qualify for a mortgage than we do now. I think rental demand is going to go through the roof. I think rents are going to have to soften, even though the demand is going up, because the average American is currently paying 35% of their gross income on rent, and one in four are paying more than half of their gross income. So with the pressure, especially in Class A multifamily, um, you're going to see massive competition if you're a landlord. You're going to have to step up because there, there's going to be some downward pressure on rents across the board. From the political side, and, and I don't really want to make this a political call, but we all know who Janet, Janet Yellen is and, and who she was in the last crisis. And my perception of why she's being appointed to Treasury is because that is a workaround because the Democrats aren't controlling the Senate. And it seems to me that the chessboard is being set up in such a way that we can almost do unlimited quantitative easing and take federal measures from the Treasury and from the Fed, which could kick this can way further down the road. So the correction that everybody's waiting for in March or April is very likely not even to, might not even happen. If you look at the amount of debt the Fed has put on their balance sheet since 2008, it's 30, I think $36.8 trillion has gone over there. We have debts we can't pay off and we're still doing it. I wouldn't be surprised if you see the Fed actually move defaulted mortgage debt onto their balance sheet to avoid a worse housing crisis than we've already created. And if that's the case, that will support prices. But at some point, the hangover is going to be even worse. So it's hard to tell. I don't think we'll get, we're in a deflationary, we're in a stagflationary economy right now. So I think not much is going to change in the short term. In the long term, you're going to see massive inflation and you want to own as many pieces of real estate as possible because the money we're printing will pay that off for you. And if not, you'll be left behind. So I think you've got some more time to make hay while the sun shines. And I don't believe that these valuations are real. I think our inventory levels are falsely low because of people's comfort level and they don't want to move during a pandemic. But at some point, and it might be six months, it might be two years, at some point, you're going to see the inventory shift and flood the market. Some of it's going to be distressed. Some of it are going to be equity sales. Some of it are just going to be people trying to get the hell out of cities and into suburbs. We already see some of that. But it's a game of hurry up and wait right now. I think the policies that are, we're going to see in Q1 and Q2 are going to give us a lot more clarity on what we can expect. But for right now, I would say stay the course and make hay while the sun shines. Yep. Yep, well said and brief. Thank you. We do have a few people in the queue, guys. I'm apologize. We can't get to everybody this week. If there's anything urgent you need us for, just reach out directly right after the call. And I want to end this like I always do. I want to thank each of you for being here, particularly thank those who participated. I want to congratulate the ones that had some wins. We'll have to pick the best one and we'll let you know. And I want to challenge each of you. Take one thought, one thing, one idea that inspired you on this call Go out and put it into practice, and please come back next Thursday and share your results with the group. Stay healthy, stay productive, have a great week, and we'll talk to you same time next Thursday. Take care.